Hey everyone, in this episode we will be talking about non-nullability in GraphQL and what the guarantees to our consumer actually are. I find that when it comes to non-nullability and non-null error propagation in GraphQL, it's quite difficult to understand when you get started with GraphQL. So we will have a look at actual server code and see what it means if something goes south. If you like our content, please hit the subscribe button down below. And with that, let's just dive in. If we look at our GraphQL server here, it's essentially the basic GraphQL server template that uh, comes with Hot Chocolate. So if you install the hotchocolate.templates package with your .NET CLI and run .NET new GraphQL, this is exactly the server you will get. So our GraphQL server here has a query root type with a single field that returns a book. Our book entity has a title and an author, and the author has a name. So very, very basic example. So let's just run that um, and see how it works. And I'm using .NET Watch here, so I don't have to restart my server all the time. So don't wonder that it just works. So let's head over to our GraphQL IDE Banana Cake Pop and open a new tab. And the first thing we will do is have a look at our schema reference. And what you can see is that we have a query type, essentially the same that we have in C Sharp, that translates very well to GraphQL. So we have a query type, and this query type has a books field. And we can see that it actually returns here book with an exclamation mark, or the bang operator as we call it in GraphQL. And that means that this field will return never null. So this field is non-nullable. And if we dive into that, we can see that our book uh, has a title. And the title returns a string that also never will be null. And the same goes for author, which will never be null. And also, just to make it complete, the author's name will never be null. So let's go back to our GraphQL server. Why is that all nullable, uh, all non-nullable? This is because uh, we use .NET 6 and we enabled here um, nullable, the nullability of C Sharp, meaning that if we just formulate here a reference type that doesn't have a question mark, then it's non-nullable. So in C Sharp, nullability is expressed in the reverse way. So if we don't specify anything, it's non-nullable. But if we put a question mark behind it, it's nullable. So these are the basics. So what happens if I violate my contract and return null for a non-nullable field. Let's go to our operations tab and see what happens if we call our book field and ask for the title of the book. We already know there is the null returned, but this field is non-nullable. So if we run that, something happens that we might expect that we get an error saying that this field is non-nullable. So this is uh, kind of expected. So let's go back to our server and reverse the change. So book becomes an error so that we don't get anything. We just get an error because we violated our contract. But what if we violate maybe the author contract return or insert null into the author, which we are also not allowed to. If we go back to our GraphQL server here now, and we run that, we actually get data back because the data we ask for is valid. 
But if we now get into the author here and go for the name, what happens is that the whole result here is deleted. Again, we could say this is expected. We violated the contract. But why is actually the whole result deleted? Let's go back and do a quick change to our entity and say, for instance, that author is nullable. Let's go back, refresh our schema and rerun the same query. The only thing we changed is that author, you can see author is not now nullable while name is still non-nullable. And if we run that, we still get the error, but we also get now data. And essentially what happened here is that the non-null error is propagated. So we violated the non-null contract that we have with our GraphQL server, or with, that we stated in our GraphQL schema, by returning null for the name here. And what the GraphQL execution engine is doing is deleting the whole selection set here because it cannot make the GraphQL result valid uh, without deleting the whole selection set. And the execution is, uh, engine essentially sets the author to null. Since author is nullable, we have now again a valid GraphQL result because we are returning now here the, the book with a title which is non-null and the author could be null. We are also stating at the same time that actually an error happened. But as for the client consuming the data, we fulfilled our contract. If we go back to our, to our GraphQL server here, and change, for instance, author to become a list. And let's call it authors. And also do the change here in the constructor. Call it authors. And what we stated here is that the authors field is an array. The array cannot be null cannot be nullable, I uh, cannot be null, but one of the elements can be null. So if we now add it, for instance, up here, two authors, let's do one that violates the contract, and then we have another one that doesn't violate the contract. Okay. And let's rerun our query. So what happens? The field author does not exist. And that is true because we should have refreshed our schema and then fixed our query error. Okay, let's do that. Rerun it. And now we get the non-null error again. But we can see that actually we get all the authors that are valid, but not the authors that are invalid. So GraphQL protects us uh, from non-null validation, the consumer of the API, and always will deliver, even if we have errors, a partially valid result, meaning all the data we get back here is valid. Let's do one more iteration on that. So what we um, did so far is essentially saying that the element can be null, but we also could reverse it, can say, okay, actually, if one author is invalid, I don't want any of the authors, uh, but I don't want the whole result to being deleted. Uh, I just want the authors field being deleted, set to null, if one of the authors invalidates uh, our contract. So if we do that, we run our query, we get a very different result. You can see now all the authors are removed and uh, authors is being set to null. So let's dive into one more aspect here and that is errors. What 
does this all have to do with error handling in GraphQL? That's a good question. So at the moment we just violated the data contract, but what if actually uh, we had some other error that would happen? So if authors, for instance, would throw a GraphQL exception uh, saying Nick broke the service. Let's do that. And it's a new exception that I want to have here. Otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, and now we can, uh, let me just fix that compile issue here. And then let's go back to our GraphQL server. So what happens now is that this field not only returns null, it actually returns, uh, throws an error. So what happens? So we rerun that and now we can see that we have an error here. The error we will be actually uh, through. Uh, Nick broke the service. And what GraphQL does if an error happens in a field is set this field to null. And that means also again becomes null and we get a stated error that uh, uh, there is something wrong. Uh, we could also enrich the error with uh, what in which specific field and so and uh, so on and so forth. But essentially, uh, the field is uh, or our data is still valid. So an error is essentially allowed here, and the field is uh, nulled. If we go back to our server and don't allow null for our authors field and rerun that with the error, the whole result is deleted. Again, because we cannot create a valid GraphQL result because the authors field is not allowed to be null. So we only get this error now. And again, actually it would be nicer if we had some, uh, some, some field information here, we could enrich our GraphQL uh, error to have that. Uh, but let's move a bit further. So there is one more concept maybe, and that's a more advanced concept. And that is uh, something we call error boundaries in GraphQL or a client controlled nullability. It's actually a very early stage on this feature. So it probably will uh, come in the, not in the next GraphQL specification version, but maybe after that. Uh, so the, the, the specification for that is client controlled nullability and hot chocolate already implements it. So we could uh, specify that in our use case, we actually uh, don't mind if an error happens in this field. You can see banana cake pop uh, at the moment cannot, uh, does not support it. We are building that in uh, at the moment, but our server already will understand that. So putting a question mark here will change the nullability of our authors field now and essentially introduces an error boundary. And then again, our result is valid, although we say here it's non-nullable, but we actually rewrote nullability in our query. We also could do the reverse. Let's change the server back here and have the authors make the author's name nullable. So in this case, let's get rid of this guy here. We would get like a valid result. So the name can be null. But now I could say my application, my application use case actually demands that the name is always be set because otherwise I cannot render my name card. So, um, but I don't mind if there are no authors. So I could say uh, non null, uh, so name uh, must not be null. So delete this selection set if that happens, but catch the errors in the authors field. And we would get again a valid result here where authors is now null because one of the names violated our contract. 
as I said, this is a very early stage, but it gives uh, more ideas around these concepts. So I hope this clarified a lot around non-nullability and non-null um, propagation in GraphQL. I know it can sometimes be difficult to understand that, but I hope a lot of you have a better understanding around this feature now. And with that, we are at the, at, at the end. Please help grow our project and give us a star on GitHub. And don't forget to subscribe if you like our content. And with that, I'm out.